Hi, everybody. It's June 6, 2021. I came across this article a couple of days ago, and it's on Natural News, Mike Adams' site, and I never know what to really do with information that is not sourced uh, or is sourced by someone anonymously. Um, but I read it, and I thought, wow, well, it certainly could happen. CCP planning major attack on USA this year. Bioweapons, cyber war, kamikaze drones, infrastructure sabotage. So if you've been keeping abreast of what mainstream media, the information they're putting out there, then you will see this headline and think to yourself, yeah, definitely could happen. So I'm not going to read the entire article um, but here it states that the planned attack on America will consist of cyber warfare attacks on critical infrastructure such as energy, transportation, finance, and the power grid, drone kamikaze attacks on critical infrastructure to conduct acts of sabotage, the advancing of ground troops into southern U.S. states in an attempt to occupy and defend forward operations bases in Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, California. And this will happen after the power grid sabotage plunges America into chaos. Now, you know, I, I'm going to play this megacities urban future, which is a Pentagon training video for our soldiers to get them you know, to look at what the future is going to bring. Now, they bring it upon deliberately, purposefully. Uh, all, all is engineered. But take a look at what the Pentagon says is our future. And this was a video obtained by Intercept via a, a Freedom of Information Act request. <laughs> The future is urban. By 2030, urban areas are expected to grow by 1.4 billion, with that growth occurring almost entirely in the developing world. Cities will account for 60% of the world's population and 70% of the world's GDP. The urban environment will be the locus where drivers of instability will converge. It is the domain that by the year 2030, 60% of urban dwellers will be under the age of 18. The cities that grow the fastest will be the most challenged as resources become constrained and illicit networks fill the gap left by overextended and undercapitalized governments. The risk of natural disasters compounded by geography, climate changes, unregulated growth, and substandard infrastructure intersect to frustrate humanitarian relief. Growth will magnify the increasing separation between rich and poor. Religious and ethnic tensions will be a defining element in the social landscape. Stagnation will coexist with unprecedented development as impoverishment, slums, and shanty towns rapidly expand alongside modern high-rises, technological advances, and ever-increasing levels of prosperity. This is the world of our future. It is one we are not prepared to effectively operate within, and it is unavoidable. Megacities are complex systems where people and structures are compressed together in ways that defy both our understanding of city planning and military doctrine. It is an ecosystem that demands a highly agile and adaptive force to successfully operate within. Infrastructures will vary radically, with concentrations of high-tech transportation, globally connected air and seaports, contemporary water, utilities and waste disposal intermixed with open landfills, overburdened sewers, polluted water, and makeshift power grids. Living habitats will extend from the high-rise to the ground-level cottage to subterranean labyrinths, each defined by its own social code and rule of law. Social structures will be equally challenged, if not dysfunctional, as historic ways of life clash with modern living, ethnic and racial differences are forced to live together, and criminal networks offer opportunity for the growing mass of unemployed. This becomes the nervous system of non-nation-state, unaligned individuals and organizations that live and work in the shadows of national rule. Where physical domains can be seen, digital domains will have limitless potential to breed and expand without limit. 
Digital security and trade will be increasingly threatened by sophisticated illicit economies and decentralized syndicates of crime to give adversaries global reach at an unprecedented level. This will add to the complexities of human targeting, as a proportionally smaller number of adversaries intermingle with the larger and increasing number of citizens. The scale and density of these domains is daunting. In a city of 10 million, where you hold the support of 99% of the population, the remaining 1% represents a threat of 100,000. It is an environment of convergence, hidden amongst the enormous scale and complexity of the megacity. These are the future breeding grounds, incubators, and launching pads for adversaries and hybrid threats. Linked globally, these are man-made labyrinths that provide refuge and movement across the vast sections of these cities where alternate forms of governance have taken control. The advice of doctrine, from Sun Tzu to current field manuals, has provided two fundamental options. Avoid the cities, or establish a cordon to either wait out the adversary, or drain the swamp of non-combatants and engage the remaining adversaries in high-intensity conflict within. Even our counterinsurgency doctrine, honed in the cities of Iraq and the mountains of Afghanistan, is inadequate to address the sheer scale of population in the future urban reality. From the streets of Aachen to the Citadel and Way, we have defeated adversaries who attempted to use urban terrain to their advantage. Urban conflict is written deep into the Army's histories. But in tomorrow's conflict, these megacities are orders of magnitude greater in complexity, and our current options do not meet strategic ends. Our future operations must allow us to rapidly return the city to the people. They will be too large and complex to isolate or cordon in their entirety, yet our soldiers will have to operate within these ecosystems with minimal disruption and flow. Our current and past strategies can no longer hold. We are facing environments that the masters of war never foresaw. We are facing a threat that requires us to redefine doctrine and the force in radically new and different ways. The future army will confront a highly sophisticated urban-centric threat that will require that urban operations become the core requirement for the future land force. The threat is clear. Our direction remains to be defined. The future is urban. So, in this video, our Pentagon is essentially telling you we cannot protect you. We are not prepared. Uh, social structures will be challenged. Oh, aren't we living that? Um, the uh, growing mass of unemployed. Aren't we living that? The digital world will be increasingly threatened. Aren't we living that? Supply chain disruptions. Aren't we living that? Uh, the alternate uh, form of governance will take hold. We're living that. Defund police. Okay. Um, a lot of you, I know, know that you got to get out of the cities because the cities are going to erupt in so much violence and it's already incrementally erupting. You know, the uh, violent crimes are increasing in the mega cities, the big cities, the Los Angeles, New York, Chicago, uh, and, well, Minneapolis. Now, there was another riot because there was another shooting. The defund police, the police leaving police departments, well there'll be an alternate form of governance that takes hold. And let me just do the cyber, since this is the first one, the cyber war attacks on critical infrastructure, on energy, transportation, finance, and power grid. Well, we're living it already, and it is increasing. Ransomware attacks are closing schools, delaying chemotherapy, derailing everyday life. A group of organized but faceless criminals hijacking corporate computer systems and demanding millions of dollars in exchange for their safe return. But the impact of these ransomware attacks, they're increasing unavoidably. And they're unavoidably, they're real for everyday people. The, uh, I just have to see if I've highlighted anything to read. No. Okay. So 
I just want you to see what mainstream media is putting out there to the American people. You know, this is the, hey, let's get the American people used to cyber attacks. Americans face mounting risks of hackers taking over brokerage accounts. And, you know, I was reading some of these articles and I realized not only will this cause, as it has, look at the colonial pipeline attack, but look at that a little bit more closely and you will find something was wrong there because the hackers got into the billing. Uh, the billing, they didn't get into the pipeline, the operations of the pipeline, but the CEO thought, hey, just in case they do, I'm going to shut down that pipeline myself, leaving an awful lot of people without gas, causing an awful lot of chaos and disruption in a whole lot of southern states and up the East Coast. And voila, you have gas prices that skyrocketed in some places, and they never went down in some places. Okay, so, you know, look, Americans just don't want the truth. It's unfortunate because it leaves all of us in danger. Hackers have a devastating new target. It's a uh, major gas pipeline, government agencies, Florida city water supply, the world's top meat producer, it's a growing trend of hackers targeting critical infrastructure and physical business operations, which makes the attacks more lucrative for bad actors and more devastating for victims. And with the rise of remote work during the pandemic, significant vulnerabilities have been revealed that only make it easier to carry out such attacks. Now, to the Americans, get this. This infrastructure has been vulnerable, well, at least two decades. Why hasn't our government ever done anything? Oh, Biden has now developed yet another commission to study what needs to be done to protect our power grid and this, these protect ourselves from these hackers. Jeez. Why hasn't our government really done what's necessary to protect Americans? Because we've been taken over. They don't want you protected. Um, it's unfortunate that Americans don't grasp what is smack in front of their face. They don't want to know. The U.S. Department of Justice in April created a ransomware task force my God, declaring 2020 the worst year ever for extortion-related cyber attacks. The issue only seems to be getting worse. The first half of 2021 has already seen a 102% increase. Where do you think this is going? Why do they put out this information? They put it out to get Americans used to getting hacked. And I also, you know... Uh, there's so many um, facets to each agenda, but this is going towards a government ID to get on the internet. You have to reveal who you are when you get on the internet, not even on a social, just to access the internet. The U.S. government is now ratcheting up efforts to address the threat. <laughs> this threat has been here you know, and I've read articles throughout the years. It's the same, the same old, same old, you know. But uh, I guess Americans don't, they're not catching that. I, I don't know. Attacks have potential to spark mayhem in people's lives, leading to product shortages, high prices, and more. So, of course, it's Russia. It's always Russia. Russia, Russia, Russia. A Russia-based cyber criminal group called, well, the first one, the Colonial Pipeline, was Darkseid. This is Revil or 
are evil, are evil. We are evil. We don't know. You know, uh, look, our intelligence agencies have been lying forever. How Americans can, can trust anyone in our government, it's beyond, it is, I just, it's, it's incomprehensible to me. I, I don't understand it. But, hey, you know, you believe uh, at your own demise. Um, so these attacks, they're getting more and more. They are increasing. Are they coming from China? Who knows? Are they coming from Russia? Who knows? Are they coming from the United States? Who knows? The list of potential targets is long. The U.S. government's Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Agency, CISA, lists 16 different industries as critical infrastructure sectors, energy, healthcare, financial services, water, transportation, food, and agriculture, the compromise of which could have a debilitating effect on the U.S. economy and security, but experts say much of this infrastructure is aging and its cyber defenses haven't kept up. Why not? Why? Why have they let all the infrastructure in the United States age to the point that all the infrastructure is crumbling? Systems may be less sophisticated and easier to compromise. Oh, I guess we're just exceptional at creating conditions that will result in our own demise. The uh, Senate sergeant at arms says cyber attack, a bigger threat than than a January 6th repeat, bigger threat than those white supremacists, those Trump supporters? Come on. It can't be. Our president said just a couple of days ago, the biggest threat are those white supremacists, the domestic terrorists. This isn't a threat. The economy is not a threat. Nothing else is a threat. It's those, well, ACA Trump supporters those white, right-wing domestic terrorists. You know, if we had Americans that had some a, a semblance of moral core within them, that had the ability to, mm, I don't know, click off Netflix streaming movie and maybe do a little bit of research to find out what's happening in our life, they might be upset that Biden claimed that, and he did essentially claim that it, it's the Trump supporters, okay? It's the right wing. It's the Republicans. They're our number one threat. When we have threats galore, threats that have proven great chaos and disruption already, what else is to come? So, of course, they put out that information, mainstream media, Biden, uh, to create that diversion. And it's so easy. It is so easy. All the tactics that they use on Americans. Um, so, yeah, it's... Look at this. Look at this sky. You know, these pictures now. This, for the young, is... A natural sky. Isn't that frightening? All right, cyber attacks could cause real world change. The worst is yet to come. The worst is yet to come. Posted June 2nd, 2021, Yahoo. Huh. What could they possibly mean? Now, you do these, uh, you put in a search. And I'm using Google here, so, because I want the mainstream, I w because I am looking at what the enemy is reporting. All right, so, cyber attacks. And, yeah, the front page will have, you know, the row of, let's see if I still have it here. Yeah, okay, here, cyber attacks are here to stay. Commerce Secretary said four hours ago, posted, they're here to stay, huh? 
cyber attacks, bigger threat than Capitol riot. It's time for the Russians <laughs> to pay a price for the cyber attacks. All right. When you click view all, you'll get a whole list of those articles of what you are searching for. And as you can see, mainstream media is on it, putting out all, oh, Energy Chief cites risk of cyber attacks crippling power grid one hour ago. Huh. Okay. We need to be prepared as best you can for that power grid going down. So, yeah, when you do look into what mainstream media is reporting, and then you come across what is considered alternate news, cyber warfare attacks on critical infrastructure, the power grid. Anybody? Cyber Polygon? Cyber Polygon? Coming up? The simulation of a power grid going down? Mm, World Health? Uh, World Economic Forum? Their simulation? Remember? World Economic Forum's simulation? Event 201? October? The players in that simulation? The Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, um, Johns Hopkins, World Economic Forum, media, military. They have this simulation that a pandemic is going to occur. What was the name of the virus? Coronavirus. Lo and behold, it takes place, what, two months later? It goes real. So that's why we need to be very concerned about this. Cyber Polygon, July 9, 2021. Power grid goes down. So pretty much the same players that uh, comprise the event 201 are now doing another simulation with a cyber attack that throws us into a chaos like we have never, ever seen or lived before. Cyber attack with COVID-like characteristics. Cybersecurity, this is the World Economic Forum. Now, well, I'll play it. It's one minute and 42 seconds economies and societies to the core and shown us how vulnerable we are to biological threats. In the digital world, similar risks are being overlooked right now. A cyber attack with COVID-like characteristics would spread faster and further than any biological virus. Its reproductive rate would be around 10 times greater than what we've experienced with the coronavirus. To give you an idea, one of the fastest worms in history, the 2003 slammer Sapphire worm, doubled in size approximately every 8.5 seconds infecting over 75,000 devices in 10 minutes and almost 11 million devices in 24 hours. Fortunately, at least until now, cyber attacks have not impacted our health the way pandemics have, but the economic damages and therefore the impact they have had on our daily lives have been equal and sometimes even greater. You see, the only way to stop the exponential propagation of a COVID-like cyber threat is to fully disconnect the millions of vulnerable devices from one another and from the internet. All of this in a matter of days. A single day without the internet would cost our economies more than 50 billion US dollars. And that's before considering the economic and societal damages should these devices be linked to essential services, such as transport or healthcare. As the digital realm increasingly merges with our physical world, the ripple effects of cyber attacks on our safety just keep on expanding at a faster pace than what we're preparing for. COVID-19 was known as an anticipated risk so is the digital equivalent. Let's be better prepared for that one. The time is now. All right. So 
Let's see. Um, this was interesting. The World Economic Forum's latest simulation fits with the Great Reset agenda. Well, this is news, mainstream media, Sky News Australia. And what are they saying? What is this man saying? Well, uh, he could be one of those mm, conspiracy theorists. Let's listen in. And one of those I've spoken about regularly on this program is the World Economic Forum. Remember, they're the mob of autocrats who want to reinvent capitalism, to build back better, and who think you should own nothing and actually be happy. Well, you have to admire the chutzpah. They never let an opportunity to proselytise their socialistic agenda of global government go to waste. You see, they've morphed from green tyranny of the West to pandemic pushes of progressive politics. And I use the term progressive for alliteration purposes only. A more appropriate word is communist, given their agenda's striking similarity to Marx's communist manifesto, which we discussed here a couple of weeks ago. Anyway, the WEF is very influential, counting many politicians, international bureaucrats, billionaires and hardcore socialists amongst their advocates. It's probably just a coincidence that many of these groups were also involved in a, quote, live simulation exercise to prepare public and private leaders for pandemic response way back in October 2019. That, of course, was just months before the coronavirus pandemic was declared. And it involved all the usual suspects, the Gates Foundation, the World Bank, the United Nations, the CDC in America, John Hopkins University, the CIA, of course, and the Chinese Center for Disease Control. It also featured big pharma representatives and, oddly enough, a representative of NBC Media. Now, they're just some of the identities that were in attendance. Presently, though, these, this mob of altruistic world savers went through a simulation called Event 201, which was about a fictional coronavirus pandemic. Here's what John Hopkins University had to say about it last year when questions arose. For the scenario, we modelled a fictional coronavirus pandemic, but we explicitly stated that it was not a prediction. Instead, the exercise served to highlight preparedness and response challenges that would likely arise in a very severe pandemic. Although our tabletop exercise included a mock novel coronavirus, the inputs we used for modelling the potential impact of that fictional virus are not similar to N-COVID-2019. See, it's all just a coincidence. I mean, just because the players in the simulation are many of the same ones running the current agenda, there is absolutely nothing to see here. Move along. There is nothing to see. And just to prove it, even the link to the WF epidemic planning page is now dead. I told you, nothing to see. Anyway, managing the world has to be easier than managing your own website. So there is no cause for any of us to be concerned. Except about the next panic attack, of course. You see, the WEF seems so good at preparing for the future. It's wise to look at what they're doing now, because that might be coming down the pipe. Actually, the recent pipeline extortion in the USA is a good case in point. See, that was a relatively mild case of cyber terrorism. And coincidentally, of course, the WF are conducting a new simulation, this time over a cyber attack that will shut down the world economy. Imagine how quickly society would disintegrate if water and electricity and fuel and other essentials were shut down due to a cyber attack. I mean, hoarding toilet paper wouldn't be enough anymore, would it? would have to have a new collective enemy to unite against, while, of course, demanding that government save us all. Once again, the WF is making the case that this is a global threat, which, of course, it is, and is a, quote, major obstacle in our path to progress. You see, there's that word again, progress, as in progressive, as in socialist. <laughs> Naturally, such a threat requires a global response, which the WF is prepared to lead. It seems, you see, that every problem identified by this mob and their allies in the international bureaucracy requires the global centralisation of power and decision-making. And this latest simulation neatly fits in with their Great Reset agenda. Now, only time will tell if their concerns over a cyber attack that shuts the world will prove as prescient 
as their pandemic simulation. If it does, I suspect it would open up a raft of questions as to just how contrived these weapons of mass hysteria may actually be. So, sure wish our mainstream media would uh, report like that. Now, have you seen this fabulous, fabulous guy? Must prepare for an angrier world. World Economic Forum, Klaus Schwab. So um, we have to prepare for a more angry world. And uh, how to prepare? Uh, it means to take the necessary action to create a fairer world, um, to see that uh, we provide everybody with uh, decent access to the health system, um, that we make sure that those people uh, who are really left behind, uh, and I'm not speaking only on national levels, I'm speaking also internationally, if I see now uh, the tragedy in some of the emerging countries like South Africa, like some... Okay. Angrier world, and we, we have to make sure that this world is fairer, fairer. No, we have to make sure that the world goes socialist? No. Well, socialism, socialism is just another, oh, it's a kinder uh, name for communism. That's what they're bringing in. And they also want to kill off an awful lot of people. That power grid going down will do the trick. Um, you got to listen to 56 seconds of this. We all know, but still pay insufficient attention to the frightening scenario of a comprehensive cyber attack, which would bring to a complete halt to the power supply, transportation, hospital services, our society as a whole. The COVID-19 crisis would be seen in this respect as a small disturbance in comparison to a major cyber attack. To use the COVID-19 crisis as a timely opportunity to reflect on the lessons the cybersecurity community can draw and improve our preparedness for a potential cyber pandemic. Well, <clears throat> we I really do suggest that you all, you know, do what is necessary for what might be coming up. Will the cyber attack come before the simulation? Probably not. Would a cyber attack come maybe just a couple of months after the simula uh, simulation on July 9th? Look, this is the face of evil. You cannot, cannot assume what this evil will do. Unless you're evil yourself, you can't put yourself in their shoes. They have no limits. They do not care. They're not interested in making the world a fairer place. They're interested in controlling every aspect of everyone's life on this planet. And as hard as it is to imagine that, you've got to imagine it. Because all the ducks are, they're all lined up. This has been an incremental takeover of the world for many, many, many decades. And now it is in our face. So, the next part two will be, and look, the cyber attack, it could come from the United States and they'll blame it on China. They can do what they've been doing forever, lie. 
create a false flag, which means you're going to be uh, the one committing that event that takes place, and you just blame it on another country. You blame it on another. You scapegoat, okay? That's been our way forever. Blame it on China. China, Russia, United States, all these countries are working together to bring about the new world order. So, power grid goes down, the chaos that one could imagine, advancing ground troops. You cannot discount anything anymore. If this was told to me 15 years ago, if I was reading this, I'd just, I'd go, this is ridiculous. Okay, we've lived a whole lot of that ridiculous to the point where now the ridiculous became the evil and we're seeing it, we're living it, so you cannot discount anything. Power grid sabotage may very well be coming. Prepare as best you can for that event. Even turn off your electricity for a couple of days. A whole lot have experienced that. They might not have to do it, but if you haven't, turn it off and live without the internet, your electricity. You'll begin to understand what you need. And then if you have the resources, get what you need. The links are below.